This is the video review for Transformers Prime Robots in the Skies Arachnid, and I don't really like this figure. She has some good things going for her, but she has a lot more bad going for her. First, let's talk about our weapons. These things, I like the way they're painted, I like the side profile, but the minute you look at it from any other angle, it just starts looking ugly. Because this thinness of it means that from the front, well, it doesn't look threatening at all, it's just a bit of cardboard almost. From the side, what is it? And just this flatness of it makes it really inappropriate, a really inappropriate weapon for any kind of 3D figure like all of Transformers. It, it looks like it's more at home, on, like it would be more at home on the papercraft figure, just because a papercraft figure would have the same kind of flat, boxy feel to a lot of parts of it. And I like papercraft. I think it looks uh, pretty interesting. These would work decently on the paper on the papercraft figure, but this is not a papercraft figure. It doesn't have any of the charm of a papercraft figure. It has a bit of its own charm, but it's uh, not really. These weapons are also a bit oversized. They're just not suited to the figure. I don't like them. I'll show how they fit onto her robot mode hands after that. Uh, these are going to the void. Now, for Arachnid herself, I do like the helicopter mode. It's nice and sleek. It looks pretty aggressive and threatening, although it does also look a little bit boring because it's just a sea of darkness except for the cockpit and the rotors. I wish she had a bit of a, of a livery like a Decepticon symbol or Autobot suck or just any kind of identification number, just anything to make it look more interesting than this because I like the silhouette, just she's lacking on detail. And uh, she does have quite a few uh, panel lines on her, but I think they actually kind of work, because if I saw this helicopter in real life and saw the panel lines, I'd be like, oh yeah, hey, looks like a helicopter. Neat. And uh, I do like the general design of the helicopter. I do like the rotors. At first I was a little bit miffed by the leg design of the rotors, but considering what they have to do, I actually don't mind it so much, and I really like how they spin. And, uh, I mean, that's about it for the helicopter mode. It's just this, but it, it does look nice. There is one last thing, actually. If you open this up, you can see a little cockpit inside. There's a seat, which is a neat detail, although it ends up screwing part of the robot mode later on. The little uh, control panel here. It's very nice, although, if you notice, yeah, the rotors have to come to a complete stop before the pilot can get in and out. And you'd have to hope that the rotors didn't stop above it, which... Honestly, no helicopter would ever have a feature like that. Because that would mean that the helicopter would be very inconvenient. You couldn't leave it running while you were doing stuff. And it's just kind of a... It's not really a knock, but it, it's just kind of a little oddity. Now, transform this figure. I do like the transformation, although it is a bit simple. Pull out the arms. Actually, they... They hook in very easily, or very hard, or tightly, then you pop them out, and stay focused, focus, pop them out, down, pull out the hands, unfold the arms, then you will pop these bits back here, just leave them pegged together, split the legs, and point the toes forward, and then... The next step, we want to slide the back of the sh back of the helicopter back, but be careful because the figure will stab you. These will stab you. This will stab you. This will stab you. This will stab you. It's a very stabilicious figure, which kind of makes the step kind of annoying because it's also very tight. And then here's basically the robot mode. All we have left to do is make her spider legs. To do this, rotate the rotor so that this hinge is facing up. Bend this up, and there's a little uh, slot here and a tab here. Put it down and pray they stay together. Bend the legs a little bit. And that gives us three legs, not her eight legs. We can bump it up to five by taking this and splitting it. And sort of splaying it out to the side. And after that, Arachnid's in her robot mode. At a distance, I think a robot mode looks pretty decent because it has her general shape. But if you start looking closer at the figure, she is extremely ugly. So from a distance, decent. I like the combination of the black and the purple. And then the silver and gold on the head. But 
bring her up close, and uh, the problems start. The arms are incredibly ugly, especially those hands. Her chest looks more like a bodybuilder's giant pecs than, you know, a dainty female chest. The legs look just a little bit too thin, more paper crafty like the weapons were. And then the legs, well, they just kind of sit there. They don't do anything. They're not dynamic. And then you have the giant backpack here, which from the back and side doesn't look bad, but from the front really robs her head of detail because all the unpainted detail of her head is lost in a sea of black. And the overall thing from a distance looks fine, but up close it's just very ugly. And then her articulation is pretty bad too, like her legs. Her legs are awful. Look at her thighs. See how much crap is around them? That's how far back they can go. That's how far forward they can go. That's how far out they can go. That is awful! Now she does have a little bit of rotation here, but it's almost nothing. You can get her legs to go a little bit more far forward if you use that rotation, but then the legs will pop off. So her thighs are almost a complete bust, which really sucks. Although her knee isn't that bad, she does get a bit of toe articulation. This little bit right here actually screws with her balance because it means her incep from here to here isn't flat, so that needs to be cut off. And then next we have the arms. The shoulders aren't actually that bad. They go in and out, rotate around 360. But what sucks about them is she has this little pauldron bit here that bumps into her backpack with these little tabs on them too, which will catch and make like, it won't move, which it's not that big of a problem because you can bend them out of the way, but it does catch enough to be frustrating, which is what's annoying. And then the arms here, I mean, they can bend at 90 degrees, but it looks awful. And then stuff bumps into each other while you're doing it. And ugh. you get a bit of hand articulation, which I guess is nice. Like, hi, YouTubers. And then the final nail in her coffin is her head. It can, can rotate, uh, it can wobble side to side, and that's about it. Any kind of turning, aside from this much, is blocked by the back of her head, which, if you can see that, is actually the uh, chair from the uh, vehicle mode. It's neat how they did that, but it sort of screws with the figure. Focus. I suppose you have more articulation in the leg bits here, but it's all kind of limited. And basically, it's not going to look any different than this. So the overall figure, not that great. I do not recommend her. Now, her weapons, they plug into her hands like this, and they look overly big and kind of ugly yet again. Like, look, she's pointed at me, but I'm not threatened because it doesn't look like a gun. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, about, that's about all I can say about the figure. It's crap. Don't buy it. If you like the stuff I review, Transformers, Marvel figures, Brave figures, Macross figures, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.